Hi everyone, it's Pamela Radwin, otherwise known as Molten Girl. I thought I would uh, film another video before the holidays. Um, it's going to be on my mixing and how I mix my paints to produce the results I get. I'm going to show you the products that I use. I'm in Canada, um, so I do have products that are uh, most likely different from what you may find around the world. Um, I did manage to cross the border recently and get this um, Sherwin-Williams HD TV Ultra Deep Base. So I thought I would give that a try. I'm going to be doing different colors today, so hopefully we can mix things up a little bit. And I will be doing a combination of um, tube paint um, as well as one powdered pigment from Pearl X Jacquard just to see how everything works together. I will be showing the dried result later on uh, when I'm uploading this video. It'll be dry by then. Um, what's important to remember is that the paint consistencies, especially that of the colored paint, need to be very similar to one another. Um, so if they're not, you're going to get um, a result that will not dry properly and your design will run off. So with that said, I'm going to just dive in here and show you how I mix my pouring medium. So what I tend to do and what works well for me is I use um, two tablespoons of this um, Sherwin-Williams um, Ultra Deep Base, which is untinted. And I just want to say that I have mixed this pretty well and it has a very strong chemical smell. So when you're working with this, sorry, I just fell. When you're working with something like this, um, you need to have proper ventilation. I'm just going to move my paints. I have my window cracked open a little bit. It's very cold today. It's um, minus eight degrees Celsius outside. So it's quite cool, but it's cracked open just a little bit because the fumes in this particular base paint are very pronounced. I do have a friend um, in uh, the Channel Islands in Jersey that told me she has difficulty using these paints because of the fumes to the point where she's experienced really bad migraine headaches accompanied by temporary loss of vision. So it's scary and I thought I would mention it because when I'm finished using this, I generally put it away so that it doesn't bother me anymore. I have 30 mils of the um, HGTV Ultra Deep Base and then I'm adding my Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish I'm going to add half of that, so 2 to 1 ratio, so 30 to 15. And that's about right. I'm just going to pour that right in. And mix that up. I hope everyone has been well. I'm just going to put that to the side, mix that up. This is a very small container, but um, hopefully I don't spill anything out. Just mix that well. So I'm mixing that up very well. That's mixed up. So that's, again, 30 cc's of the HGTV to 15 of the Joe Sonia. So that's done. Now, in a, in a, so that can settle. It has a bit of bubbling happening, but hopefully that'll settle. In the meantime, I'm going to mix my cell maker with the Australian Floetrol. It's guaranteed to give you the cells. So I'm just going to give that a good shake. It's going to be bubbly, but for demonstration purposes, it is what it is. So I take about a tablespoon of that as well, a little bit more, most likely. So I have a tablespoon, 15 mils. I'm just going to pour that in. That's 15. Tip that upside down so we get everything in there. And 
and I'm going to add another five to that. Let's put that, so there's 20 all together. Okay, so there's 20. And to that I'm going to add my Windsor & Newton Titanium White. I like this one. You can use any Titanium White. Uh, I know that a lot has been said about the Amsterdam. It's good as well. I just happen to be out of that and I'm really liking the results I'm getting with this one. So in there, in that same teaspoon, I'm going to add a teaspoon of the white paint. So five mils. This is a little thinner maybe than the other paint, than the Amsterdam, that's about right. I mean, I can even it out, but let's see. Yeah, that's about right. So five mil, I'm just gonna plunk that in here. Put that aside, we don't need that any longer. I'm gonna clean that off so nothing sticks to it. And give that a mix. So I wanted just to say thank you to um, Jilly Cube in Australia for giving me a huge shout out and um, a lot of support for my latest videos and starting up my channel it means a lot to me. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. One of the reasons I started my channel was to put my art out there and, you know, help you guys create things. We're all going to create differently because we all do things a little bit differently. You don't have my hands, I don't have yours. And the beautiful part about this fluid art is that you can use the same colors over and over, but you will always get something a little bit different. That's kind of cool. No two paintings are alike. Well, nothing really that's made by hand is ever going to be alike. So I'm going to set those aside here, off to the side. I'm, I have these shot glasses here. I can get them at the dollar store. They're fairly inexpensive. For all purposes, they work with what I need to do. You can pour vodka or tequila in them. I like to mix my paints in them. So I'm just going to get a few of these glasses out. I mentioned in my first video that less, the less colors you use, you can get really beautiful effects. You don't have to use an overwhelming amount of color. Um, to produce results that are pretty outstanding. So I thought I'd do something in blues, um, just a little bit different from all those rich golds and purples I've been doing. I still love those colors, I'll come back to them, but um, let's create something a little different. So I'm going to use the Windsor & Newton Ultramarine Blue. It's really pretty. So what I tend to do is squirt a bit of paint in here just enough to sort of coat the bottom. There we go. Well, there's enough in there. Um, I try to make sure that I have about the same amount of paint in each cup so that everything is fairly consistent. To that, I think I'm going to add a little bit of the Golden Interference Blue. It's really pretty. I find myself using this quite a bit. Um, to get some really nice metallic effects. I'm going to just add a little dollop of that in there. That's good enough. We're going to mix this up because I want to really see if you can mix the powdered with the tubes. Um, I even have, let's add in here a little bit of the phthalo blue from Golden. It's a fluid acrylic. I'm really tempting fade here, I think, by adding various paint consistencies, but what the heck. Let's see, one, two, three. Plus this allows you to make a really nice custom color. So I just stirred that up gently. And then I have the Amsterdam Thalo Green. It's another pretty color. So let's add some of that in there. Not in the same cup, but in another cup. Again, enough to sort of coat the bottom. I might add something to that as well, I'm not quite sure. I do have another deep turquoise from Artist Loft. 
I'm basically showing you that you can combine different colors without having to necessarily want, use one particular brand. So maybe like a squirt of that in there. I mean, I find golden paints are gorgeous. They're like the, I don't know, Gucci or Louis Vuitton of the acrylic painting world. So we have those two mixed up. And then I'm going to use my favorite green blue from Pebio. It's an iridescent metallic. It's really pretty. I find I use this one, doesn't matter what, I'm running out of it, but not to worry, I have another huge tube. That looks about good. And what else can we add? Oh, I was going to add this powdered pigment. So I will show you how I mix that up too. Might as well, this is a mixing video, let's do something fun. So what I do, there we go, I take my popsicle stick and there I added like a, I don't know, about an eighth of a teaspoon, about an eighth, and I dump it in there. Now this color is called, I forgot to tell everybody, deep turquoise. It's hard to see, these are very hard to read but it's called deep turquoise. And to that, I add my golden retarder. It's a mixing additive to uh, slow the drying time, but it, it's really good for wetting down the powdered pigment. And I add about enough in there just to wet, them, wet it down so it's not grainy. There's peanut. I think I have to add a little bit more because it's not enough. Sorry, it's it's about an eighth of a teaspoon of powdered pigment to about the same um, in the retarder. It should be like that kind of a consistency. It looks kind of grainy still. I don't know, maybe to that I'll add something else as well. Maybe a little bit of interference blue, my, my favorite one that I just added to the other. I think this will add some depth and more me metallic-like effect. And you can mix acrylic with the powder. I mean, I just did, and it comes out really pretty. It's a little lighter and really, really pretty. So we're doing all blues today. They're all different hues. I find that the paints I use, they're, they're buttery. I don't know how else to describe it. They're very smooth and easy to blend. Um, I find that sometimes when I use Liquitex, um, it's not very easy for me to mix. So I tend not to use Liquitex, nothing against them personally. Uh, I just don't like using them because I find them, again, hard to mix. So I have that pouring medium here that I mixed up. I'm just going to give that another gentle swirl. Okay gonna set that aside and to, sorry to these colors I add about a teaspoon of the pouring medium so there we go there's one it's a bit thick so I let it run off as much as I can and to each color so I'm going to tell you something about the Gloss varnish, uh, you need to use a good one. I like the Joe Sonia one, and there are others out there, but make sure that you're using one that prolongs or extends your drying time of your colored paint. Otherwise, you're going to get the annoying cracking, and the reason that it happens is because your base paint that you put on your canvas or wood or whatever surface you're painting on is drying faster than the colored paints. This is really pretty. I know it's hard to see, but that interference blue together with the true blue powdered pigment from Jacquard, oh my gosh, it's really pretty. So this is the combo of the ultramarine blue from Winsor & Newton together with a few drops of the phthalo blue from Golden and some of that interference blue as well. This is a little thicker, like a lot thicker actually. So this is good to know, see? 
things like this, you're thinking, oh, okay. So that's a lot thicker than my other paints. I'm, what I might do is just add a little bit more pouring medium to that, but not much. I found there's a, a lot of volume in that particular container. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more pouring medium. I just eyeballed it like half a teaspoon, maybe quarter to a half, because that is pretty thick. I don't know, we're gonna see if this works. This is all new for me as well. There's some air in there as well, so let's see how it works. This is a learning thing for me as well. And if it's a mistake, I don't believe in those. I think you learn from your errors as well, so it'll be a fun video. It's all about having fun. So art, that's what art should be. And that's why I started my channel as well, is to have some fun and share what I know with you guys. So those are my colors. This is my cell creator. I don't wanna get into trouble for using a different term, so let's call it a cell creator. I think the internet has become very interesting because back in the day, back in the day, we didn't have internet um, when, oh my gosh, say Picasso was around or Everyone likes talking about David Alfaro Sequeiros lately because of the cells and in fluid pouring and whatnot. But there was no internet back in the day. So how were we supposed to give shout outs to people like that? You couldn't unless they were written about or spoken about. Uh, you read about them in books. Sometimes they'd give interviews. Um, so I find with social media, it's great because we have access to people around the world. We can learn different things. This is my Glidden Semi-Gloss White. I'm just gonna pour as I'm talking. We have access to things we can learn. We can teach ourselves um, basically whatever we want. I've known medical students, and this is kind of scary being a nurse, but um, medical students in university who will go on YouTube to find certain answers and Google certain videos to see how certain things are done. So we've come quite a long way in terms of what we can access and with that come expectations, I suppose, as to what we want in return. And, you know, these shout outs and everything like that and giving credit to people, it's all great and, and, and whatnot. But I mean, when do we stop? I mean, I teach classes at a local gallery and if I expected people to reference me every time they made a painting that was inspired by me. Um, I think I'd have a problem and um, I think it's important no matter how big you get or how successful you become that um, you stay humble and true to who you are and I don't know I've taught my children that as well I was raised that way and I think it's important to realize that this could all be gone anytime and to come back full circle to my point. Art should be fun. I love art. I got into nursing as a profession because I love helping people, but my passion is art and I do it because it really um, decreases my level of stress and gives me something to do and allows me to create something pretty and beautiful in this crazy stressful world that we live in. So that's why I create and do art and I do various things uh, meaning I use different mediums. I work with glass, uh, watercolor, I've done oils. Those are, oh my gosh, those are really challenging. Um, I do a lot of different, uh, most recently the fluid acrylics, alcohol inks, which I will be doing a video on shortly as well. But, um, and I'm rambling here, but my point is art should be fun. People interpret art in different ways. And there's so many things that I paint and I look at and I go, oh my God, I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe I should trash it or scrape it. But then someone else might think it's beautiful. So <sighs> beauty really is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. So I believe in that. Anyhow, so let's put these colored paints on. This dark blue or this really rich royal blue. Actually, it's not even dark. It's a rich royal blue. Um... Should I open my door to see if Pina's gonna behave? Let me try that. He likes keeping me company. Pina, you're gonna be a good boy? Okay, he's gonna be a good boy, he said. I'm going to start with maybe the dark 
phthalo green. Let's try that. Let's put that on the bottom. And he, these guys are pretty thick, I'm not going to lie. That Sherwin-Williams uh, product is extremely thick. I just want to make mention that it's very, very thick. Let's put this beautiful ultramarine blue combo on top of that. And I probably don't need a lot of it because it's so rich and gorgeous. We'll let those colors settle. Let's follow it with that beautiful pigment. See, this is thinner. So this will be very interesting to see if we get the movement and if our design dries the way we want it to. As I mentioned, people like to show their pieces wet, but I will um, post a photo of two tiles that I did um, using similar colors to this. Beautiful, I posted it on one group on Facebook. Beautiful result, but because my paints were in similar consistency, the piece dried horribly. It ran off the edges. It did not look like it did when it was wet. I did not, I wasn't impressed with myself, but I learned something in the process. And as my father, bless him, used to say, as long as you learn something from <laughs> your mistake, uh, then it's not wasted, is it? So I'm going to have a sip of wine. It's five o'clock somewhere, I'm sure. Maybe it'll bring me luck here. And with that, we're going to put our magical cell creator, which is the Australian Floetrol and Windsor & Newton Titanium White. You, uh, Jen Neal of Res Inspired has done so many endless experiments God bless her, um, to create things without the Australian Floetrol. The only reason I use it um, is because I just want the result. And the Australian Floetrol guarantees you that if you're doing several pieces and you want consistent results, then that is the way to go, but you don't have to use it. I just like it because it gets the result I like. But yes, you can achieve the cells without using that. I also don't like using glue in my um, paintings, only because I don't know what it's going to be like down the road, and I just don't like using it. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a dollop of this on top. One more drop, that's it. Step away, step away. And with that, I'm going to blow the design out and let's see what happens, okay? So I got fairly close to the colors and as I'm blowing out, it's one swift blow with the cell explosive in the center being blown out through the colors. Now, if you like more negative space, as some have mentioned, I do tend to like it as well. You're almost going to sacrifice the size of the cells for the negative space. So you have to ask yourself uh, what look you're going for. You might want to do a combo where you take over the whole tile. I just did a quick demo just to show you guys. But um, if you wanted to stretch out this design, you could do that. The metallics are really pretty and it's hard to capture. But I will run off a little bit there and sort of center this design out. Because of that pigment, it is a little, it's, it's moving funny. So let's see how it dries. This is very interesting. And I'm trying to center the piece before I move it. And you can see, I can see, the paints aren't moving similarly. So I don't know how this will dry but I can tell you that there are spots that are moving much faster than others. And that's because that powdered pigment is thinner in consistency to my other paint. So if you're wondering why you're not having the luck or your design is running, that's probably the reason why. So this will be a good 
lesson for those see how that see how that center is moving I'm moving it down but the cells are going up they're fighting me because paints are different so let's stretch this guy out this way okay I'm going to leave him the way he is only because if I play around with him too much I will lose that design in the middle. And as it is, I, I might lose it anyhow. But if I play around anymore, the colors are gonna run. So I'm just sort of eyeballing it and looking at it. It looks really, really pretty, but time will tell in terms of how it dries as to what the result will be. Will it dry the same way? So I hope you found this video educational, fun and helpful. That's my main goal is that it helps somebody in some way so that you can go and create something similar. Um, yeah, so share below what you'd like to see next. As I said, I may make a video on alcohol inks next. Um, it's anyone's guess. I just wanted to get this mixing one up and I will post before I upload this, the dried result so that you guys see. Doesn't matter how bad it is, I'll still show you guys. Take care, hope everyone's enjoying the um, pre-Christmas craziness. I'm wishing everybody all the best in whatever you celebrate. I'm sending you uh, a lot of love here from Canada. Okay, take care. We'll see you on the next one.